we now have a paragraph based on which some questions are given. Let's read the paragraph. It says, a cylindrical tank has a hole of area 2 cm square at its bottom and in this hole, a conical cork is placed as shown. Initially, tank was empty and liquid level in the tank is made to start rising at t equal to 0 with constant rate 2 cm per minute. That means dx by dt is 2 cm per minute. x has been shown in the diagram here. It is observed that at t equal to 10 minutes, conical cork just comes out from the hole. Given mass of cork is 0 0.40 kg, area of hole is 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 meters square, area of circular cross section of conical cork is 8 cm square, height of cork submerged in liquid is equal to 120 by 7 cm just before t equal to 10 minutes. Atmospheric pressure P0 is 10 to the power 5 Newton per meter square. Uz is equal to 10 meter per second square. On the basis of above paragraph, answer the following questions. Question 6 says, net force exerted by air on the cork just before t equal to 10 minutes. It says it's downward, is 0, is upward, maybe upward or downward depending on the height of the liquid. Well, it's a pretty straightforward because the top surface is covered by liquid at this moment or just before this moment. Only the lower part is exposed to air and the area of cross section at this point is given to us. The force by air, we in fact have to only tell the direction. It will obviously be upward because this much area is exposed and so the force of air will be P0 into this much area in the upward direction. So that means for question 6, answer is C. Other options are incorrect. Let's go to question 7 now. Question 7 says, net force exerted by liquid on the cone just before t equal to 10 minutes is. Well, we can consider that at this moment, the cone is in equilibrium and the forces on the cone are mg downward. If you put the value, it is 0.4 into 10, that means it's 4 Newton. The force of air, also we can evaluate because this area is given as 2 into 10 power minus 4 meters square and atmospheric pressure is also given. So, this is 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 into 10 to the power 5 and that means this value is 20 Newton and this means that the force by the liquid which is balancing this thing must be something like this and the value of FL will be the difference of these two forces which is 16 Newton. So that means question 7, D is the correct answer. Let's go to the next question now. Question 8 says net force exerted by all the fluids on the cork just before t equal to 10 minutes. Well also this is pretty straightforward. Basically it means that we have to find the resultant of force applied by air and force applied by liquid on the cork and that force is simply equal to weight of the cork. So, no calculations required really. We can straight away tell the answer. So, it should be the option, the correct option is C for question 8. Let's go to the next question now. Well, here we are with the next paragraph. It says, three identical point masses A, B and C are connected by two ideal strings of equal length and placed over a smooth horizontal xy plane as shown. At t equal to 0, another three point masses 1, 2 and 3 having same mass m are projected towards a, b and c as shown. Coefficient of restitution for each collision is mentioned in the diagram. Well, this is the figure and on the basis of above information answer the following questions. Question 9 says, tension in the string just after collision is. Okay, so this is the situation. A, B and C, these three particles, each of mass M are located here. And then there are particles 1, 2 and 3, again each of mass M. So, 1 and 3 are moving with velocity V0. 1 is approaching A and 3 is approaching C. Whereas 2 is approaching B. The speed of 2 is 4 V0, speed of 1 and 3 we can see that it is V0 each. This distance has been given as 3L and 
these distances have been given as L. Now it's very clear that all the collisions will happen simultaneously, right? In fact, we can work out the time. The time this one is going to take to strike A can be given as L by V0. The time after which 2 is going to strike B will be 4 L by 4 V0. So it's the same time and 3 also takes the same amount of time to strike C. So that means 3 collisions will happen simultaneously. And the values of E are also given. So just after collision, if you look at the situation, A has head-on collision with 1. So that means A will have velocity V0, this is for particle A and B and 2 will join together to form a single particle of mass 2m. So this has mass m and this let's call it B dash whose mass is 2m now and we can find its velocity by conserving linear momentum. The equation will be 4 V naught M is equal to 2 M V dash and that gives us its velocity as 2 V naught. And the particle C also has velocity V naught. This is the situation about velocities of the particles just after the collision, right? Tensioning the string. So if we look at uh, this string for example, C rather among A, B dash and C just after the collision, B dash will be an inertial point. Why? Because on this, if tension the string is T, then T is acting towards left, T is also acting towards right. So the net force on B dash is going to be 0. That means just after the collision, B dash can be considered as an inertial point and on A there is tension acting like this. Now to find tension T, we can look at the velocity of A respect to B dash just after the collision and that will be V naught towards in the downward direction. So velocity of A respect to B dash just after the collision is V naught in this direction and clearly respect to B dash A is performing a circular motion. B dash as I said is an inertial point so that means we can straight away say tension is equal to mv0 square by L. Now among the options it is clearly matching with option B. So option B is correct for question 9. Let's look at the next question now. Question 10 says velocity of mass B just before the collision between A and C. Well we saw in the previous question B because of symmetry B will move in a straight line always. So B is moving in this direction and just before collision all three are aligned right. So this is B dash and the other two are here. It's something like this. This is let's say A and this is C. So if I call this direction as Y direction, in Y direction all three have same velocity just before collision between A and C. So we can conserve linear momentum to find the velocity in y direction of all three just before the collision and to do that, well, earlier we had momentum in y direction. We apply conservation of linear momentum in y direction and that is going to give us mv0 for A, similarly mv0 for C and for B dash it is 2m2v0 2 2 that means 4m v0 is equal to 4m vy. So vy is equal for all three particles and this gives us the value of vy equal to 6v0 by 4 or simply 3v0 by 2. Well if you look at the options it is clearly matching with option D. So option D is correct for question 10. This is the velocity of b dash or B because B is attached to B dash only. Whereas this is the Y component of velocities of 1 and 3. Let's look at question 11 now. And in question 11, we have to find speed of mass A just before collision with point mass C. So the result we got in the earlier question will be useful here. And to find the speed of mass A, in fact the other component, let's say the X component, 
of velocity of a we can conserve mechanical energy of the system and also use the results that we've got earlier well the total mechanical energy of the system so we are applying the concept of conservation of mechanical energy and after the collisions the mechanical energy was half mv not square for a and same is for c so we multiplied by 2 plus half 2m is the mass of b dash and its velocity was 2v not so by conserving mechanical energy we have half mv not square into 2 2 because a and c have same kinetic energy just after the collision plus half into 2m into 2v not square that means 4v not square that's the mechanical energy just after the collision of the system of a b dash and c and this is equal to half 4m vy square and vy we had found it was 3v naught by 2 so 3v naught by 2 whole square and a and c also have x components which are equal and opposite so that means it is equal to 2 times half m if one is vx we can write it as vx square this will give us vx and vy we already have so by combining the two we can find the speed let's do the calculations now we can remove the factor of half everywhere we can also remove m everywhere and then we have 8 plus 2 10 v naught square is equal to 9 v naught square because this 4 will cancel with this 2 square plus 2 vx square and this gives us vx equal to v naught by root 2 as I said vx is x component of velocity of a just before collision and so speed of mass a va will be under root of vx square plus vy square which is 3 v naught by 2 the whole square plus v naught square by 2 this is again under root of 11 v naught by 2 well if you look at the options it is matching with option b so option b is correct for question 11 let's go to the next question now